This is Connections, and my connection today is Anna Emanuel, who's a real estate agent nowadays, so welcome mm-hmm. to my basement studio. It's awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So you're the, exactly the kind of person I want to talk to, as I, I was telling you via email. Someone who's reinvented themselves mm-hmm. mid-career. So someone who has reinvented themselves mid-career. So the last time we met, I was doing street interviews. Yeah. I was doing street interviews, um, Bloor Street. And yes, I remember that. Yes. So I was working for uh, doing financial uh, financial yes. company. You do remember? I do, I do. So um, you graciously uh, <laughs> uh, agreed to to answer some questions, which yes. was great because, and it's a pet peeve of mine. You're in a demographic that tends to avoid the camera. Yeah, look away. Or, or and or <laughs> me in particular. So which I've noticed for a few years. But you were great, and so and so you just. But you, you also there was several different categories, and you just stay there and answered. Yeah. So, well, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, nine <laughs> years, nine years. Uh, well, it's one of the reasons why I thought you'd be um, interesting for this because you're not afraid of the camera. I'm not so, afraid of the camera. Or, or is that part of what makes you? I mean, you're a salesperson now, really? <laughs> or is that is, yeah. is a certain fearlessness? Is maybe a, a it's a it's a practice thing. Uh, it, yeah, it definitely is. I remember. Um, so I remember when you stopped me, and I'm like, a camera? Why? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm a sucker for being on camera. I guess I'm a ham. I was a very performer oriented child, but I would say that <clears throat> I got a lot shyer. And then when I went to university, I did a broadcast journalism degree. And the thing that I wanted to do most is be on camera. I wanted to be a reporter or a host or something like that. And I remember wearing my little jaunty red jacket, like my actual, like I wore like an actual like suit jacket to school because I wanted to be on camera. And I would say to everybody, if you don't want to do the camera part, I'll do it for you. I'll do it. No problem. (laughs) So I was always jumping on camera. Um, And then when I went into television and live events, none none of that was me on camera. It was me producing, which I actually really loved as well. So um, being able to get back on the other side of the camera, actually as a realtor and being able to <clears throat> offer guidance or advisory, whether it's on camera, whether it's in front of people, I'm really, really comfortable and I actually really love that. So uh, I think I'm digging back into that part of my uh, personality. Um, and uh, like I said, behind camera for so many years that I forgot that I can be back in front, and I'm really comfortable, and I like it. So, in my, from mm-hmm. my point of view, I think of you as working kind of in television and mm-hmm. the event industry. Yes. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's been hard hit, right? That yeah. industry. So, what, what have you heard? I, you're connected to a lot of the pe- same people I am, but yeah. What, what have you heard from? Because it's been obviously a tough eighteen months, it was two a, years. Yeah, COVID really. I mean, I still remember being. It's the typical. Where were you when it all sort of shut down? I was in my basement. Uh, where I was working on my business plan for real estate and I had just really cemented my full-time plan. But I'll backtrack. I started speaking to a lot of friends who were former colleagues of mine and every single person was in freakout mode, if I could say it gently. (laughs) Everybody was just falling over, probably in a state of shock and just frozen for a while. Um, But when I realized, even within a few weeks of that initial freak out, all the clients that were um, talking to these colleagues of mine were saying, well, we can't not communicate with our employees. We can't not tell them what's happening. How do we turn this virtual? How do we make this all happen online in the virtual space? And it was just the perfect timing of how virtual meetings and events could um, really take off. And then all these colleagues who suddenly said, well, well, geez, I've never done a live event before online. I, I've only done it live. Okay, I guess I'll learn. <laughs> and then they just all learned. Yeah. And it became kind of amazing. Um, I noticed a lot of people just, I would say, transformed into a whole different career. And I watched it from the sidelines. I watched that happen. And I, I was, uh, I just really couldn't believe the timing, right, for myself, where my transformation was taking place, but also for my colleagues, where they had to go. And a lot of them have survived and thrived. I'm not sure that they're enjoying it as much. I think the the live stuff was really fun. Um, it's not quite the same. Well, to me, a lot of, a lot of virtual, the best virtual events were really tele, became TV shows. Yes. The problem with that is you're also comp- competing with the Zoom. Yeah. Which is kind of free, and and so it was tricky. And there was a lot of you know, there's a lot of kind of 
BS online when you're kind of just doing half half baked internet research where people are talking about virtual events in the way you thought of virtual t 20 years ago, where you go to a convention center, but you, you're an avatar and, right. you're, and you're working. Your, so people say they're selling that and doing it and enjoying it. I don't believe them necessarily. <laughs> At the beginning of all that, you said you were actually, so So is, the pandemic didn't cause you to go into real estate. It's, you, you, it's, you were planning it. It was timing, Already? yeah. I, so it... yeah, I mean, I definitely was. I had I had got my real estate license in 2017 with a plan to just follow a passion. I love looking at homes. I'm obsessed with real estate value. I grew up in a household where all we talked about was real estate. My uncle was a real estate agent. Um, friends of family, everyone talked about how did they anybody make money in you know our our community was through real estate because nobody understood the stock market. And right. uh, so real estate was kind of the Toronto way of making money because Toronto was such an infant that any property anywhere in the city, if you bought it in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you you made money. So it was kind of a, a common refrain. And besides the fact that it was a financial um, plus for people, it was also that's where you live. That's where you make memories. That's where you raise your children. That's where you have the big parties that you remember when you're an adult. Oh, I remember being a kid in that basement of that house. That's really what drove me to do it. And I actually did it because I thought, I'm gonna keep my full-time job in production and I'm gonna do real estate on the side for friends and family when they need me so that I can help them and guide them and be uh, a source of um, education while they're going through that process. So they don't have to go outside and find another agent. They can use me. But you have to study to do that. Oh, it's an intense. And you take a course or yeah. pass a... Oh, it's. A, I mean, it's a lot. Like, there's a lot of people who uh, do it full-time and then, meaning, go take the courses full-time. And a lot of people who are working full-time and they offer a lot of options to do it virtually. But, yes, some of the courses were intense and um, I just hadn't been a student for a long time. I forgot how to be a student. Okay. So... I took a few years to do my courses over the course of a year and a half. I'm raising babies at home. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm working full time, flat out in production, 50, 60 hour weeks, all the time online. And I only look back now and think what what an incredibly productive person I was <laughs> during, during that time because I was so driven. Uh, it didn't hurt that my husband was very supportive and he took care of the kids and cooked and took you know, took care of things while I was studying. As so, husbands are wont to do. Yeah, they so. are, they are. You know, he saw that passion that I had for it. And he said, I support your dreams. And if you really want to do this, I'm behind you. So keep your full-time job, do real estate. Let's figure it out as you go. But I was <clears throat> driven to consider an alternative lifestyle, which was, what if I become a real estate agent full-time? I just didn't think I would ever do it because the risks are so great. I mean, in Ontario, there's probably 60,000 licensed real estate agents. And I mean, I, I know we have a big population, but right. 60,000 people you're competing against is a lot of competition. So you're in Mississauga? You're, you're, uh, my brokerage your is business. in Mississauga, right. but I'm focused anyway. on West Toronto and Toronto Beach just because I was born and raised in the city. Right. I'm familiar with East York. I'm familiar with Vaughan. I'm familiar with downtown and condos and all that, yeah. Because one of my main questions yeah. here was gonna be, so you're in Mississauga, Population about seven hundred fifty thousand, but there's about two hundred fifty thousand real estate there agents. <laughs> how do, how do you break through? It's a dime a dozen. It's not a joke. It's true. There are a lot, and there are a lot of real estate agents who are doing it. It's a means to an end. They have a family. They need to feed them, and they're gonna some some agents are gonna be great, and a lot of agents give our profession a very bad name. <clears throat> right. I'm constantly. I feel like it's a personal desire to raise the professional standards of our profession. Um, and that actually goes for any profession I've ever been in. I always want to lead with integrity and with truth and with good vibes and really concentrate on my client. So Mississauga, Toronto, th that that whole area, it's literally littered with <laughs> realtors. Roadkill. <laughs> it's a roadkill. And it's brutal and it is hard. And there's a lot of people who will do anything to make a sale, a transaction focused realtors who are like, I just need to close this deal. Do you need to buy this house? Yes, I so. don't care if you like it, buy it. I've met a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot. 
And I'm shocked every time I hear that. I have had more than my share of clients be referred to me <clears throat> because somebody said to them, your realtor's really pressuring you. Why are you working with that person? You should work with my realtor. Her name is Anna, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. And I get these people who are shell-shocked. They're just like, you're so what's going on why are people so pressurized like what is this yes. pressure cooker and i'm like why are they making you feel like that it's awful so i yeah. there's a lot of myths in real estate too so mm -hmm. like i've heard that only five percent of real actual real estate agents may make a living i mean yeah you're not wrong the numbers are actually <clears throat> startling i think there is out of 20 so i Right now, the numbers are between 56,000 and 60,000 realtors in Ontario who are licensed. And I think that the stats are that less than 10,000 of those realtors, I think less than 10,000 do 80% of the business, something like that. So on your hand, you can basically count the top five and there is a short list after that. So the, I'd say 35 to 40,000 realtors do one to two deals a year, which if you really actually add that up, it's barely $20,000, maybe $20,000, depending on what they're depending buying or selling. Depending on the, the commission is. Yeah, yeah, depending on the commission. And also realtors are known to give rebates, which is that you help a client, then you give them some money from your commission as a thank you for using you. And in a lot of cases, you know, it's a really common practice. So you end up giving a lot of your commission away. So you don't get you all the commission. You, it goes to the brokerage or a lot, a of, lot it of it. All of it goes because to the brokerage. Because they're supporting they you through you. the, the yeah. lean times, basically. <clears throat> and you're using their facilities yeah. and their name and everything. Yeah. Okay. There is a misconception that realtors take all the con commission. Obviously, right. somebody has to pay for the big office and all the staff and all the desks and all the computers and, and everything. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's the... They and they offer a lot. It depends on the brokerage. Not everybody is, uh, you know, very thoughtful and helpful for their agents. I happen to be at a brokerage that does provide everything, and so I pay them to provide those things to me. And so I pay them their commission, I guess you would say, and then I take some, and then I also give back to my clients almost every time. And I also make it a point to give to um, uh, a, f a charity that works within. Royal LePage, which is about um, women and shelter, especially in abusive situations. And I give some of my commission every time to that. So there's built-in costs all through the system. Um, so some realtors who do two to three deals a year, they're really barely squeaking by, and that's really hard. Um, so how do, how do you get new clients? Um, that is the... the, the if you, that, the holy grail for everybody. I was going to say it's the holy grail, it, the Pandora's box. It's, it's not the right word. Um, all it is is actually talking to people. If I talk to people, they come on board as my client. I don't talk to people. They choose whoever the realtor is that's closest to them who has been peppering them with stuff. So it is one of those leaps. And this is where when the pandemic hit, why the leap for me was I felt like triple harder um, because I was suddenly not seeing anyone, not talking to people. I had to go out of my way and I still have to go out of my way to say, hey, Jim, haven't talked to you in a long time. What's up? What surprised you about the real estate business? Uh, how much of it is prospecting and client um, client development? So do you cold call or what? Uh, yeah, I literally about? have to talk to, I just have to call everybody that I know and right. just, hey, what's up? And remind them this is what I do. It right. is the hardest thing. And I will speak from my heart. It is you. the hard, it surprised me. I did not know it would be, first of all, that hard to just pick up the phone and call people who you haven't seen in a long time right. and randomly say hello to them. Right. That's hard because you feel a little bit like it's disingenuous, right? It, it is, it feels disingenuous. But on the other hand, if you're driven by the desire to actually be a help for people, then all you're doing is telling people, hey, I'm here to help. And if you need me, you let me know. That's not a disingenuous. So there is that line where um, I always feel like I'm, I'm nervous about it coming across a certain way. But then I really do mean it from my heart that I'm around if you need me. I don't need your business today. But will you consider me? Right? Yeah. No, I, uh, somebody in, in your old business told me that once. It's like is getting across that barrier it's like just you're just letting people know you exist yeah and it's like you're there to help i'm here yeah. to help you in case you ever need something and that's sort of you find that too that must well, happen for i mean 
I don't do the cold calling as much, but like certainly when I was starting out, it's just literally like no yeah. one knows you exist. Of course, they're not going to hire you. Yeah, so well, it is that for an introduction, yeah. at least they can throw it in the, this is before email, really. They yeah. could throw it in the garbage. But back then I would send a letter who, yeah. do, who does it, yeah. that anymore <laughs> and that I would follow it up with a phone call and hope to get an interview. So if I'm getting X number of interviews a week, that was I was at least doing something and making progress, right? And that's like a full can be a full time yeah. job, just doing that. And uh, that's a commitment, right? To do the, that and stay and stick through it and do it and and not. But you know, fear is a good motivator too, yeah. because if you like, you got to do it. Like you know, you, you're you're not happy doing what you were doing, and mm. this is what's required. Is like that you know when you're re reinventing uh, yourself. It is a big motivator. <laughs> I quit a very high paying job where I was in charge of a lot of people and it was a great company that did good work. I, you know, we obviously had challenges on a daily basis, but I cannot say that they treated me poorly. They treated me very well. And I was probably the second highest paid person at that company. And I literally walked away from it. I said, I'm resigning. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm now going to do something different. And I just put a line in the sand and I said, if I don't do this, if I'm stuck to the golden shackles, as they say, I will never leave. What's stopping me from leaving? And then literally the pandemic hit like next, next month. So there was a little voice in the back of your head. You just weren't 100% fulfilled in, yeah. that, in that job. I've been very lucky in my life to know what I wanted to do for a living. So when I was in university and high school and university and whatnot, I knew I would be in television, production, events, producing something. And probably about six, seven years ago, the, uh, the voice in my head came in and said, are you sure about this producing thing? Because you also really love real estate. Is that maybe your second passion? Should you maybe follow that? Uh, and like I said, I took the courses almost on a passionate whim. I just do, it, do them, do well, and just be prepared to help people. But probably won't make it a real career. I remember taking friends for lunch and saying, oh yeah, I'm just doing real estate for fun. I'm just doing it for myself, my family, and my friends. I'm keeping my job. Little did I know that that balance just somehow, I don't know, tipped in favor of real estate. Um, and so I, you know, with again, support of having a, a partner in life who was making enough money to support us and we, I didn't have to I did have to work, but what I mean is I could take the risk for a short time. And we did this thing where we said, okay, we have a six month window, January to June. If by June you have literally not done one deal, then oh, then we'll reconsider. So I kept kicking the ball a little bit down and saying, okay, a few more months. And then suddenly like whoosh, 2020 was crazy. Everyone I knew needed a house, needed to sell, needed to buy everything. And they were using me. This was because of the pandemic? This was- Or a coincidence? Coincident, well, in a few of the cases, relationships were ending. I don't, it was not pandemic based. They were just ending and they needed somewhere to live. And the pandemic just happened to hit it around the same time. So those people found me because I was out there. I was available. I was making it my business to tell people right at the beginning that I was doing this. Um, that was not pandemic based, but I think the the, the busyness into the late summer, fall, early part of this year was more pandemic. Uh, people moving. To, Does it help, to get help to be a woman in that situation? I mean, I'm assuming you're helping single women friends. Some, no? some male, um, but mostly women. Yeah, mostly women. And I have learned more than I ever expected about separation and divorce and how <clears throat> how the banks treat women in those situations and how you have to be financially prepared with your realtor in order to move into something and how competitive you have to be in the housing market to find your dream home. Um, I am uh, reading I, about um, just employment for women is down yeah. during this this pandemic. Yeah. And that makes sense, of course. She session. Uh, I remember when I, when I was quitting and deciding to do this full time right. is that I had to pep talk myself on a daily basis to not give in to what was expected of me, which is to stay in this big, great job, make my money and just shut up, right? <clears throat> so wanting more, risking, wanting more, asking for more, saying I could do better than this for myself was a daily, if not hourly conversation because I had zero reason to leave a great job and only the future of 
which was murky at best. I have a real estate license. <laughs> That's about it. Right. Uh, I have no prospects. No one knows I do this. I haven't been doing it long enough. How will I ever make it? Um, Did it feel like you were jumping off a cliff? Oh, or? absolutely. Okay. I, I jumped off the cliff literally hourly in my head. I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. And I was really proud of myself. The biggest learning for me was just how uh, proud of myself I was because I did something that most people don't do. Most people will not take that risk. And I, again, I acknowledge the support network around me that, you know, said, do it, just do it. Don't worry. Don't. But I know, I, I know a lot of people personally in my life and friends and whatnot who are zero going to take a risk like I did when they're passionate about something, but they're not going to do it. I was really proud of myself because I did not have a cushion. My cushion was make it work. <laughs> my cushion right. was do it, not, oh, well, if, it, you know, I can't, I'll just do this other thing on the side. No, I just had to make it work. And I struggle with that constantly because every day in a realtor's life is what's your next job? Who's your next client? Right. How are you going to make money? Where's the money coming from? And it's also a lumpy salary, right? Similar to freelance producing where I was doing that as well. So, you know, you 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 work for a stretch and then you get paid at the end and you kind of hope it makes up for all the hours you spent. So that is uh, knowing that that's what I was facing. I had to be so brave and I'm I'm not a risk taker, but I really did find my footing in that space. Um, and I kind of, I felt very encouraging of others to do the same. Like as soon as that happened with me, I looked around and I said, why aren't you just taking the same risk? But I realized that all of us have different reasons and different times when a risk is okay. So you're happy in real estate. I love it. You're happy I love with it your so choice. Much. Yeah, I love it so much. I do wish that I could still dabble a little bit in production, but I think it might be more along the lines of doing TV segments or um, blogs or podcasts. But again, with me being in the real estate seat, not behind the camera. So yeah, I do love it. How do we get in touch with you? <laughs> Pretty easy. <laughs> um, my, uh, uh, I do have a website and it's my name, annaemmanuel.com. I have the craziest last name, so I think you're gonna have to write it for people. Um, and uh, you know, I, I pride myself on just being a guide through real estate, trying to help people navigate their life stage. Uh, no pressure for me. And that's my favorite thing <laughs> ever. I don't feel pressure. Um, to sell anything. I feel pressure to make a client feel happy. That's that's the pressure I put on myself. So Anna, thank you for your honesty and yeah. for coming. So thank you thank so you. much, Jim. It was such a pleasure. Uh, no one's asked me these questions, so I appreciate <laughs> it very much. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you.